sex ratios of fawns is an interesting topic, and most people aren't familiar with the fact that sex ratios vary depending upon several conditions. There's something called the Trivers-Willard hypothesis, and that hypothesis is based upon the belief that the condition of a female is going to influence the sex of her offspring, where females in good condition are going to produce male offspring, and females in poor condition are going to produce female offspring. And the philosophy of this is, it goes in this way. The reproductive potential of a doe fawn is pretty standard whether she's a low quality fawn or a high quality fawn. Almost every doe is bred. So when a poor quality female fawn gets older, she's probably going to be bred and she's going to produce offspring. Whereas a high quality fawn, when she grows older, she's also going to be bred and produce offspring. And there's not a lot of variation in terms of their reproductive potential. But there is incredible variation in the reproductive potential of males. And what, what we find is that some males breed a lot more than other males. And so if a female was going to ever make a choice to invest in, in a fawn and to invest in her offspring to try and improve her reproductive success downstream or to improve her offspring's reproductive success, then she should invest in male offspring. A high quality male, it, a high quality male fawn is more than likely going to develop into a high quality male and produce more offspring than a low quality male. A low quality male fawn is probably not going to be as high a quality when he gets older and is going to have much lower reproductive success. So when a female is in good condition, that is the time she should produce a male fawn. She's in good condition, which means she can produce lots of milk, and she can give a jump start to that male fawn early in life and increase the chances that he is going to be a dominant male later in life and produce lots more offspring. So the Trivers-Willard hypothesis says when you're in good condition, produce male fawns because that's the time you can produce your future super buck. When you're in poor condi conditions, invest in female offspring because you're probably not going to have be in the condition to produce that super buck. A conflicting hypothesis is what's called the local resource competition hypothesis and it predicts the opposite. What it predicts is that a doe in poor condition should, should, should produce bucks but a doe in good condition should produce female offspring. And the theory behind the local resource competition hypothesis is this. If a female is in good condition, then that probably means that the range conditions there are probably suboptimal. So when she's in poor condition, she wants to produce the dispersing sex. It's males that disperse. So by producing a buck fawn when she's in poor condition, then by default that buck fawn's going to disperse, maybe move to a higher quality area, but also, number two, not hang around and compete for resources when conditions are poor. When conditions are good, the range is probably good, and so that's when she wants to produce female fawns that are going to overlap their home range with her at a time when sharing those resources is not going to be as bad.